<laughs> All right, welcome to the new show. Yeah. Today we're going to have a Cohiba Puro Dominicana with Hamilton Navy Strength Rum. Yeah, Navy Strength. Thanks for tuning into Cigars, Liquor, and More as we join our buddies Bill. Howdy. And our other brother Daryl. Smoke up, Johnny. Chilling through 2022. Broadcasting from our studio speakeasy as they talk about cigars, liquor, and anything else that comes to mind. All right, well, the Cohiba Puro Dominicana is a 6x50. It has a Dominican natural wrapper with Dominican binder and filler. MSRP is $12. The Hamilton Navy Strength is bottled at 114 proof. It's a West Indies rum. But on the bottle, it says American products. I, I don't, I'm not really sure. They are made by using select aged stocks of Jamaican pot still rum and uh, Demerara, Demerara rum from Guyana. <laughs> The spirit was bottled in traditional Navy strength of 57%. MSRP is $34. Now, I've had rum for a long time. I have never heard of this. So this is new to me. Uh, apparently, I didn't know as much as I thought I knew about rum. Well, we had one other rum that was quote-unquote Navy, and it was also 114. So when I got this one and it said Navy strength, it was 114. I'm like, yep, that's a thing. That must be a thing. <laughs> that's a th that must absolutely be a thing. <clears throat> All right, and then once we get going, then you can. Uh, you didn't like you. You get. You could do a cold draw. You could do a cold draw. What do you think? Nah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just earthy. It, it's pretty mild. Actually, pretty mild cold draw. Yep, just a little earthy. I'm gonna light it up. Now the puro dominicano is. Available for purchase uh, in a wide variety of places, but is no longer on Cohiba's website. I noticed that. I was going to mention it. Where, how did you notice it? Because we talked about it, and we talked about it before, and I don't remember seeing it on their website. It's not there. So I went back and looked, and it wasn't. Nope. Um, I guess they're, uh, they're like, no more of that. But so you can still you can still purchase it. Uh, just about anywhere. There's still some yeah, cigar new old shops. Stock, that, I imagine. Yeah, still some cigar shops that have it. Um, uh, Cigars International still. Don't has think it's it. gonna be around for a while though, because uh, it's gonna disappear and then the inventory will be gone and you won't be able to get them anymore. Yep. So if you do like them, I guess you better buy them. Uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. We've had them before. This isn't the first time we've had them. This isn't the first time we've had one on our show. But yeah. it's the first time we've had one on the show with rum that's navy. Proof. True that. Or Navy strength. I'm sorry, not proof. Navy strength. All right. Let's see what the bottle says. Something tells me so, it wouldn't take a whole lot to get those sailors drunk. It's a Ministry of Rum Collection. <laughs> Distilled and aged in the West Indies. All right. Imported by Caribbean Spirits Incorporated. Uh, Bradenton, Florida. Bottled by Five and Twenty Spirits, <laughs> Westfield, New Jersey. So, I'm tying New York. So it goes all over the place. Okay, in August 1740, Admiral Vernon ordered that Royal Navy sailors be given lime and sugar with their daily ration of rum for good behavior that it be made more palatable <laughs> to them. To verify the strength of the rum, the purser would strike a spark into the mix oh, of rum and gunpowder. You know, this has been contested. <laughs> if yeah. it ignited, the rum was proofed, or would it be known at least 57% alcohol. At 57%, this rich proof blend of Jamaican and Guyanese rums adds the taste of ripe West Indie bananas, spice, tobacco, smoky oak, to any cocktail. But first try a modern Navy grog. Mix one and a half ounces of this rum with a half ounce of petite cane sugar. There you go, sweeten it up. And an ounce of lime juice. Okay, so they're going to go with the, the Admiral's recommendation. And not do, yeah, do the lime so you don't get scurvy. <laughs> well documented fact. 
Oh, really? Dang. Interesting. So yeah, a lot of people did not know that. A lot of people think that. Um, See, and I thought the I thought the gunpowder thing was was kind of a not that was a, urban legend. a legend thing, myth. Because uh, who would want to waste gunpowder on determining proof of rum? I think you're thinking the wrong direction. And and who would want to waste that level of rum to show its proof? <laughs> and uh, no. Uh, I guarantee, being at sea for a long time, no sailor is going to give two shits if that's a high proof or low proof. Give me something that's going right. to, you know, that I can enjoy myself and can make me sleep. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's a bill thought. I've not done that job, thankfully. Yeah. So. So there you go. Oh, but at 114 proof, you can water it down. Just don't water it with salt water. Probably a good call. <laughs> you don't want to purchase it already. Though. All right, so what's up with the nose? Oh, good. Get me back on track. You know, it is... Um, it's strong it's on strong. the nose. Woo! Yeah. Yeah, you could just about uh, light up your nostrils with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure you need a fire to prove this. No. Uh, it's clearing out my nostrils, though. All right, so... Oh, All the is, flavors spi- they think are there. It, it is a spiced rum, though. It is a spiced rum. Yeah, yeah. You you get you get more than just uh, rum. <laughs> yeah, you get more than just rum. They put some in there. Almost, uh, almost a floral flavor. No, mine's mine's fruity for me. I don't know what that other flavor is. It's got a long enough finish. Yep, and it leaves. Uh, Leaves this thing on the mouth. Just leaves it there. It does. It's like, I'll, I'll be back later. It does. 114 proof rum is a bit different than 114 proof whiskey. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Maybe what we need to do a little bit later on is kind of proof this down and see what it does. Sure. We could do that. Hmm. I got to tell you, I wouldn't turn this down, though. No, I wouldn't either. It's got a, it's got a really interesting combination of... Of hotness and and flavor, and it does it does have a spicy flavor as well as a spicy aroma. Um, it's beca- it's better than Bacardi One Fifty One. Oh god, hands down. So yeah, same thing. Uh, the spice adds a little something to it. It's nice, um, but th- again though, it's hot. It's not something it's I a, could drink all night. No, it's very hot. But it's uh, I find it interesting that. There's a lot of flavor coming through, even with all that hotness. That's true. I wonder what it tastes like at 90. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll go find we'll, out in just a minute. We'll get there. We'll get there. Mm. Uh, so let's give the cigar a little bit. That Cohiba is nice, nice wrapper. Loving the look of that. I mean... I would be incredibly disappointed if it was anything but beautiful. I mean, that it's their thing. Yeah, you know? it is. Uh, well, yeah they they go for they go for the upper, mm. upper crock, man. Interesting what the smoke does with the rum too. Um, let me try that again. Try to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it finishes long enough. You don't have to rush. <laughs> take a little rum. Take a little dr- uh, uh, smoke. It does something. Um, I can't say. I don't know what it is. Um, it's. It sounds really dumb to say smoky. Together they. <laughs> together they're really good. Mm-hmm. I like what the finish does with the cigar, and. It's indescribable. <laughs> To a person of my caliber. I'm sure other people who are better than me could describe it in a heartbeat. Oh, did you notice the shirt I'm wearing? I did. I almost, I was going to get, I I mentioned it as we pulled up. I'm going to tell him that's a really nice shirt there. 
That was that was that hilarious. Was, it's, a, it's a birthday shirt. We <laughs> we bought it for him. So. All right, all right. You just said. Mm-hmm. I like it. I, I like it. Rum first, then. Oh the yeah. Cohiba. Same. Same. Um, it just kind of doing. Doing the Cohiba first, then the rum. The rum just wipes out the Cohiba yeah, all together. Yeah. <laughs> but if you but if you do the rum, let it set for just a moment, like yeah. what you were saying. Take a draw. It's got it a long just, finish. It adds. It adds something mm-hmm. extra. So the fact that it doesn't reciprocate, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even consider this as a primo pairing. But I do enjoy the fact that it helps each other in one direction at least. Yeah. And honestly, at the price points of the two items, it's good that this helps the Cohiba. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, no, it's interesting. It is an interesting flavor, mm-hmm. and I can't... You you any closer to picking it? No. It's like a it's like the no. it's like the spice of the rum turns into more of a baking spice with the cigar, and then I don't know. It's fun though. Well, we keep doing the mm. the rum and then the cigar. We could just talk about the cigar on its own, because <laughs> I think we're we're down enough. It's warmed up. Yeah, you know, it's it's almost like it takes some of the the flavors that are in the cigar and just kind of makes it blossom in your mouth, right? So it's not just front of the palate, back of the palate. It just makes it go whoom everywhere. Which makes sense. I don't, I don't know. At 114 proof. I, <laughs> it's just kind of, uh, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know. Really hard to describe. Really hard to describe. So we we have done the uh, Puro Dominicana before, and I did not look it up and see what our thoughts were on it then, or what we drank. That would be with cheating. It <laughs> what did we drink with it? I, I know I can but look it, that up, but I think I need to do a little swishy swish to. Uh, oh yeah, I did a couple of those to be able to concentrate on the cigar a little bit. Yeah, so we did we did in a basic conversational rap session the Dominican Puro and some Lone Elm. Okay. That that actually makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Why well, I, I put this uh, Lone Elm is just so good with so many different cigars. It is. It's kind of like a a cheat day. I'll just be like, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. And I th- I think uh, after doing the, the Arm Root Harbinger again, I think we can put that in that same category. Just kind of goes with anything. I'd be interested to see what the Iron Root is like with a more mild cigar. Right. That'd be my concern. Same with the yeah. Lone Elm. Too mild, and it could overtake it. No, we've done Lone Elm and a mild cigar oh, we did? before, How mild? And, and it really didn't come out that bad. Okay, I don't remember that. Uh, I, I think the I, I think the massive amount of flavors in the in the har- Harbinger might kind of overpower. Okay, but I'd be, I'd be I think it'd be worth trying. Absolutely, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can get a case, probably of each. Keep going through the Lone Elm. <laughs> Might as well get it at case prices. So the uh, Dominican so is pretty mild, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, a, a medium coating is building. With, without <laughs> the 114-proof rum, uh, yeah, I, no, I put it in a solid medium. Okay. Yeah, it is building uh, a coating pretty um, quickly. For me, for me, I'm going with earthy and woody, and uh, I don't know, maybe a maybe a toasty or a nut flavor. Can't quite 
pick that one out, but the predominant flavors for me are earth and wood. Okay. I was going to say there's like a baking spice, earth, and maybe a little leather. Some of that, some of that um, tannic kind of flavor, but, uh, but really mild. Everything's pretty mild. Yeah. I don't think it's really super. Oh, like, tonight, it's a nice, taste. The, the flavors blend together so well that it's just not, you're, you're not, or I'm not anyway, just right off the bat, just picking them out. Kind of have to really think about it. I definitely like it after the rum sip a little better. It's nice. It's a good addition. Well, it, it makes it, it, it does kind of make it a bit more spicy. The cigar. A little bit. Maybe. Anyway. Baking we, spice, though. Pretty mild spice We for me. have some good news Phenomenal for the cigar news. smokers out there. Yes. Came out on the 5th. Came out on July 5th. Yeah. Um, the FDA court, or no, the federal, federal court courts. holds the FDA regulations on premium cigars to be, quote, arbitrary and capricious. Which is, I think, what quotes. CRA has been saying for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You're just lumping us in. You're not looking at the research. Not looking at the data. Right. You just you want to regulate all tobacco. Right. Not only tobacco, but tobacco-like products such as vape, right, uh, right, which isn't even a tobacco product. No, but are you going to put any provisions in there for marijuana? Because marijuana is a tobacco-type product. Yeah, it's more like tobacco than vape. Yeah, yet you're going to regulate those. But are you going to put provisions in for future uh, marijuana provisions? No, no, there's nothing in there for that. So, they're just... Even though you're inhaling smoke with marijuana, mm-hmm. unlike... A- inhaling and holding. Right, and holding it longer. <laughs> yeah. so, and cigars, you do not inhale. You don't inhale cigars. I'm sure there are a couple of crazy fools out there that do. Oh, my God. But they're not going to live long anyway, so they're statistically unviable. I agree. You're too crazy if you do that. You're going you're gonna to Darwin award yourself out of this world. Very much so. Now, I know you've heard this name, Judge Amit Mehta of the U.S. District Court. Yeah, I like this guy. Uh, for the District of Columbia, <laughs> issued an opinion concluding that they acted arbitrary and capriciously when it decided to regulate premium cigars in 2016. Specifically, faulted the FDA for failing to consider scientific evidence submitted by Cigar Rights of America... Yay, Cigar Rights of America. The moderate use and limited health effects of premium cigars. This is why you need to be a member of Cigar Rights of America, because they are actually doing something to help us. Yes. Thank God. Mm-hmm. So, now their regulation is on hold. Oh, and I like the attorney. Did you see who the attorney was? Yeah, I saw that um, two of the... So the two Florida senators were... Drew Newman, general counsel and fourth generation owner of J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) He is the general counsel. That's fabulous. Uh, Oh, if I were a cigar manufacturer in America, I would have got my law degree a while ago. (laughs) Oh, you just about need to to navigate all, uh, all these regulations. It is a heavily regulated industry, and they want to do it even more. Yeah. Um, not as heavily regulated as, yeah, it's all about the money. Not as heavily regulated as uh, liquor and firearms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and explosives. You know, getting the ATFE acronym. In Get there. them all there. Um, yeah. But, it, but isn't, it, isn't it funny? How the ATF, because the T in ATFE is tobacco, Mm -hmm. and yet it's the FDA doing all this stuff. Yes. Not the ATF or ATFE, but the (laughs) FDA. So they have to, so (laughs) they they couldn't do, I don't know, could they not do anything through ATF? So they had to go and, ATF was too busy fighting guns is what it is. Probably. (laughs) I did like some pretty, pretty strong words 
he uh, said that the FDA's decision to regulate premium cigars was not reasoned decision making. Yes. <laughs> that is about the meanest thing a person writing a a a opinion. nineteen page opinion in court of law can say to a person. You, sir, are unreasoned. <laughs> well, and that and it's said towards a government agency, <laughs> which you know is unreasoned. Faulted them for non-responsive circular reasoning and waving away evidential evidence of actual current <laughs> usage patterns. <laughs> That's me waving not, away the <laughs> not reasoned decision making. You, sir, I worked with people. I work with people like that. I find I find your conclusions unreasoned and unwell thought out. Unreasoned, vague, and capricious. Mm-hmm. You sure, no, sir, should un- lose your degree. Unreasoned, arbitrary, and arbitrary capricious. Oh, uh, this is this is freaking awesome. Now they have a month to uh, uh, to come up with other language uh, and and present it to the court. So he didn't strike it down. He didn't strike it down totally, at least not yet. So we'll see what they come up with. In a month? Uh, they can't do anything in a month. No, because they didn't plan for... No, they didn't uh, do Jack. They, they didn't plan that this would happen. Yeah, they just said, oh, aren't they putting flavorings in cigars too? Yeah, put it in there. They're marketing the children. <laughs> just everything. It's just, it's just a lump sum bucket, right? Just pile it on. Nobody's and in the parking lot of the high school going, hey, 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 hey. you got a Fuente? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, 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 no, well, okay. No, I'll get you a Fuente no, tomorrow. No, but I got a Podomo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's not happening. How about a Drew? You want a Drew? <laughs> yeah, I heard they're flavored. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Absolutely. Absolutely. So well, I'm very glad this finally went that way. Very happy it's about it. Been moving this. in that direction. Um, the National Academy of Science, Engineering, and Medicine issued a 520 page report on premium cigars and largely agreed with the um, uh, uh, Cigar Rights of America analysis of the science. Yep. And uh, the National Academies analyzed the same studies that the, uh, the Cigar Rights of America yep. shared with the FDA and concluded that the overall risk of premium cigars is modest. Uh, and that modest, modest risk is on the upper end. That's the top end of what it is. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm pretty sure salt and sugar fall in that category of modest risk. Well, not salt. Not not added salt. Added salt's high. Is it? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have a heart problem. First thing they tell you, don't add salt. How come everything has added, added salt then? <laughs> uh, added salt is you pouring salt on top of your food. Okay. At least that's... Have you ever tried the uh, unsalted canned green beans, though? Yes. Unpalatable. Nope. Got to add salt to them. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, I'm very glad. The, I'm, you the, know, the one thing that I add <clears throat> salt to regularly are eggs. I, I add salt and pepper to eggs almost every time. But just about everything else, I've, I've weaned off of it. I also add onion powder and garlic powder. Yeah, I do that as well. For, with uh, Well, I do that with scrambled eggs. With over easy, just salt and pepper. Okay. Oh, diluting it down. Yeah, I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna do a dilution. Just a touch. I, I need just a. I need, I need a bit more in order to be able to do that. I do like that. Oh, it is a cap. Okay. Now, in cork. fair fairness, it, I don't know that it could come off any hotter. So it didn't. So some things have gotten hotter when we diluted them down. This yeah. didn't, but it got a lot more flavorful, like fruity and. Whatever that spice is. So if you're going to take a guess as to where you're at on your proofage. I didn't drop it a lot. It's probably still over 100. Interesting, though, because it's actually kind of got like a weird scotch flavor to it. Like that 
Just like the 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 anesthetic kind of a quality mm-hmm. that comes with a yep. uh, a peated scotch. Yep, I'm it right. doesn't have the band aids and tires and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Campo Fenique, but it, it's a little bit of the anesthetic. Now my second water probably did drop it to maybe ninety, but that's because I'm getting a really small volume of it now. It still comes off as a bit hot. Yeah. But the, a lot more the, fruity. The finish lasts longer, and yeah, I'm I'm going fruit. I'm now. now I'm now in the camp of fruit. I now I'm, okay. I now get uh, get that fruity flavor over a flowery flavor. Why, Bill? How many flowers do you eat? <laughs> well, this this uh, <laughs> this dilutes down well. Mm-hmm. Most things do, right? Uh, very few. Yeah, only every once in a while is one like, yeah, oh, that didn't very, go the right way. Very few that don't. Let me tell you, I am super pleased with that court decision. That yeah. turned out that turned out really, really good. And uh, Half Wheel put out, reposted. Uh, I think Charlie had like a nine point why this could go our way and why it couldn't. Yes. And uh, I think he he, po- he reposted it because a lot of what he thought was true was true. Was in there, In yeah. the finding, yeah. yeah. So, nice. Also nice. Kudos to you for getting it mostly right there, Charlie. <laughs> I'm glad he got the part wrong where he thought it could go against us. <laughs> well, when it comes to... But a he court, had arguments about why it could go against us. Well, when it when it comes to courts, you never really know. Mm-hmm. You never know, really know what's going to happen. Um, Mahet has been on this forever, though. He had well since since 2016, right? That, mm-hmm. That's when the that's when the court cases started, uh, and he's he's been the appellate judge on this yeah. for a while. Yeah, and it's not a surprise that the two major centers part of this were Florida. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I mean, that that's cigar America right there. It is. It is. I mean, there's a lot still made there, even though um, there's a lot that used to be made there. It's not made there anymore. Yeah, but there's still... It's a, still a business. still a bunch. Oh, yeah. It's still a real business. Uh, and you still have headquarters there and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, corporate offices Heck, even if like it's just that. Newman. Even if it was just Newman. That's a large enough U.S. Well, institution to matter. Newman is huge. So cheers to that. And they make a lot of really good cigars. <laughs> All right, why don't we take a really quick break and come back with the second half? Let's do it. All right. Wrong one. Wrong one. Let's try that again. <laughs> Enjoy the any time of the day cigar. Drunk Chicken Cigars are nub alicious. So good you'll smoke it to a nub. You can get 10% off your order at drunkchickencigars.com by using the promo code CLM2020. All right, we're back, we're back, we're back, and you should look us up, sign up, all the things we always tell you. If you're listening for the first time, you can find me <laughs> on Instagram under Cigar Daryl. You can also find the show in general at Cigars Look or More. Bill CLM is Bill's handle on Instagram, although is it, I don't know if it's still working. Is it working yet? Nope. Still giving him grief. Well, it, it is on the computer, but not on the phone. Okay. Very weird. Um, sign up. Contact at CigarsLiquorMore.com. Or go to the website, CigarsLiquorMore.com. You can click a little button and sign up to be a part of the weekly giveaway. Or get your name in the drawing, at least. Uh, where we hand out uh, two drunk chicken cigars. Not necessarily the DCOs, but it could be. You never know. Uh, koozies. Coasters, mm-hmm. all kinds of fun stuff. I put blue on the coasters this time. <laughs> there we go. You never know. You never know what you're going to get. Might be, might be some cutters in there if, if you know, Daryl's feeling it. <laughs> yep. You, you just never know. Last one got a cutter yeah. and a lighter. Oh, and uh, been starting to post regularly on YouTube, so you can check our shows out on YouTube. 
And yep. Cigars like her more. Yep. So there you go. Huh. Well, I kind of like the uh, the dilution worked well. I think it went I think it went well all the way down to probably ninety. I probably finished it after ninety, but uh, it still still comes off pretty hot. But the flavor gets a little more intense, and that's nice. Midway point of the cigar. Where are, where are we? I'm not. Of course, there's no transition in a Cohiba. So there's a little bit of a transition mm. for me. So um, the woody flavor that I was getting at the very beginning, I'm not getting as much now. Uh, it's really settled in, and yeah, I'm getting some of the spices um, that you kind of expect out of a Dominican cigar, but I mean, it was a subtle change. It's a real subtle change, uh, and I think for the better. All right, that nice. I I don't think it's changed all that much. Uh, I think that I'm drinking less uh, rum. It's uh, it's starting to build a coating, maybe changing flavor a little bit, but that's just... The coating, when you take a drink, it goes away. Well, when, but prior to the break, I kind of slowed down on on rinsing my mouth out, and the 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 flavor kind of built, and uh, it's still a medium, but it built <laughs> up to a really nice level. It's okay. kind of kind of pleasant. Okay, good, <laughs> nice. I well, haven't so, uh, stopped so, drinking enough. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the buildup can be just too much, and you need to rinse. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, not so with this one. All right. Cool. So I hope everybody's 4th of July went well. I was going to say this is our first show after the 4th. <laughs> uh, our 4th of July went great. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl was there. <laughs> I was. So we have a little party at the Burchard Ranchero. <laughs> Sounds like a dish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you say our porch is like a Mexican bar. So the uh, yeah we we live out in the boonies. We have a pool, and folks come over, set off fireworks for hours, hours mm. and hours. Big ones. Yep, lots of them. So a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, expensive night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, eh, it's a thing. Well, for everyone who bought fireworks, it oh, was an expensive yeah. night. <laughs> Yeah, because their prices were really up this year. Boy, were they. You, I, I'd you say can... between 50 and 70%. Yes, yes. Woo. And that's, yeah, it was it was huge. Yeah, yeah. and I guess it's because they're made in Mexico and China? I don't know. I don't know. But it was up there. The prices were up there. Still a lot of fun, though. <laughs> Still a lot of fun. Beautiful night. Uh, nice to... Set up fireworks, sit in the pool, have some drinks and cigars, barbecue. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Hope everybody had a good fourth. Uh, nice. Good and safe one. Perfect three-day weekend. They didn't have to try to shuffle it around to make it a Monday or a Friday. It was perfect. Yep. Now, we, we always do ours either the Saturday before or the Saturday after, depending upon where it falls. Right? If the 4th of July falls midweek then we'll do one or the other depending upon how right. we feel. Uh, if if it's closer to one weekend, then we'll do that. I think that's what most people so, do. Yeah. I, I, I like it on a Saturday. Uh, and, you know, nobody's working, so or almost nobody is working. Right. Uh, so you can stay up late, shoot off fireworks, and none of the neighbors care, well, especially out here. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> especially since the other neighbors are also shooting off fireworks. Hmm? Yeah, no. And then you've got uh, you've got some. Uh, we had some around here that shot fireworks off on Sunday, and then we got some that fired off on the Fourth of July, yep. Monday. Uh, and there were some neighborhood places on Friday. You know, like Wiley uh, looked like Nevada I think had we something. We watched Saxy. Sa- I think it was Saxy south of us. Yes. There were some pretty good shows going on. Yeah, it was pretty good. You, we could see a lot of it over the tree line. <laughs> Glad I didn't have to drive to it. It was perfect. Well, you could get on your roof. I thought about it. <laughs> I also thought, nah. <laughs> Bag that. And I don't I don't know if Jen will make it up there right now. Mm-mm. So. No, not a chance. Barely made it in the car. But that was fun when we did it on your, uh, at your Dallas house. Yes. 
I rather like not driving around in traffic and just watching watching fireworks and then climbing off your roof and getting a drink. <laughs> yeah, or I mean the distance that you, that you have to walk like for Kaboom Town, where you park and how oh, far yeah. you have to walk. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I refuse to go back to Kaboom Town. They, it's too, they too had much. Kaboom Town this year. This mm-hmm. is the first year's back but since COVID, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the irony. The Allen show is better than the Addison show. Really? Oh, yeah. Been doing enough of both of them. Never going back to Kaboom Town. <laughs> traffic alone is so much worse than the Allen traffic. There's yeah. ways to get out of Allen. There's not enough ways to get out of Addison. No, there's really not. <clears throat> we did we did Kaboom Town once. Yeah. Uh, and I think we did Allen once. I think we did Allen once You've with you You've done guys. Allen twice. Twice, okay. But I'd rather be here. Uh, yeah, same, same. Although it was funny that uh, the last time we went to Allen's show, they had 38 special. I'm like, wow, I guess uh, they're really not that expensive to book anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're kind of, you know, older. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it was nice. It was a nice weekend. Uh, again, I hope everybody enjoyed it. We did. We sure did. And look at that ash. Nice white, good contrast with the wrapper. <laughs> Very nice. That is your thing. Very nice. I like the contrast. You, I know. Now, are you getting that oily sheen? I don't really see an oily no, sheen. No, I'm not. I'm not seeing much of one. No. No, I don't. With as with as white as that ash is, you think you would? I'm not. It's not heavily aged. I don't think. So. Doing well, though. Doing well, though. Really nice stick. Yeah, they must be they must be ending it, though, because why wouldn't they have it on their website? So, it must be on its way out. What you would think, we need to, we need to ask Charlie from Half Wheel. We could. Or, or ask Brooks, Sean. Or, or ask Sean, yeah. <laughs> it's Sean. That's right. We Go to the source. Yeah, go to the source. Sean would know. So. Uh, but they are, still, like I said, they are still available for purchase. Yeah. Um, I've seen them. We've purchased them. I've seen them <laughs> in a couple of shops. I've seen them on uh, Cigar International. Mm-hmm. So they, they are out there. You can still get them. And they are they are good. They're, they're really good. It's a good stick. And one of their lower cost options. Right, which is maybe why they're getting rid of them. Maybe. But it falls in there. It's still a really good cigar. Mm-hmm. Now, we tend to get the lower gauge on these. Yes. They, they, make a, they make a higher gauge one than this. But I think this one's about perfect. I swear, I don't think I've had... No, wait a minute. The Royale... Was maybe a larger gauge, maybe like a fifty-four. The Royale, the blue, and the. Uh, but I don't think most of them have been over fifty-four. Connecticut, like I don't think we've ever had a Gordo, Cohiba. I doubt they even no. make them. No, uh, no. Yeah, fifty-four, fifty-six, somewhere around there. Uh, but those those three we've had have been the the larger ring gauge. Yeah, but not. Not too big. Mm-mm. Pretty close to this. I think the Toro is probably Cohiba's uh, goal, <laughs> right? To just make that. And not a bad goal. I mean, it's a good place to be. Yeah, well, not only that, but it's, I mean, if you're going to make something, isn't the Toro and the Robusto one of the easiest ones to roll? Forget, what forget I, rolling it in a Perfecto. It's forget what rolling I understand. It in, yeah. It's what I understand. Forget doing any of the specialty torpedoes <laughs> or anything like that. Just get her done. <laughs> get her done. Mm. So nice. It's a bit warm in studio. Maybe a little bit. But, you know, it's it's like 104 outside. Yeah. <laughs> Might be expected to be a little bit warmer. And the sun here. beats on that wall all afternoon. But it's so. it's still much better than sitting outside. Even in the shade. 
So what did you did the Hamilton? Hamilton, thank you. The did the Hamilton ever really tame down for you? It, even no, it's it still <laughs> still really just no. boom in the mouth. Hmm. Yeah. I, but you know what? And um, I, I kind of I I kind of like what you said about you know when you proofed it down, you really. Uh, it, it really had a, a a lot of flavor that that you know was kind of reminiscent of a scotch. Not a scotch flavor, but definitely not reminiscent. There were a couple of little it. notes that reminded me, and not something I have experienced in a rum. I think it's because it's a spiced rum, but I do like it proofed down a bit. Yeah, I just immediately, when I took my second glass here, I just immediately proofed it down. Yeah. I guess third. Oh, and I got it where I wanted it, too. Nice. Got to love it when you do that. Yeah, it's really, ni- it's really nice and fruity. I'm going to guess 90-ish. But even with that, dark amber. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good color. It's a good color. And, of course, it's not age-dated. But, and this, um, and this, is, this is proof down. They probably it's, added something to this. They had to have. I mean, it did say it was, you know, aged and blah, 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 yada, yada. But come on. It's a rum. It's an inexpensive rum. Speaking they of probably which, added some flavors. We need to we need to make it to Lone Elm to taste our bourbon, see when we're going to pull that, and, and our to rum. taste our rum. I don't think the rum's ready to pull yet, but the bourbon's got to be really close. We Especially to, the other one gallon or five gallon, five gallon, one. Five, three, three, we already five. We, we already did the fives. The, both we, fives? Yeah. Oh, we, okay. we just have the fifteens left. Um, I need to put I need to put some time on everybody's calendar, yeah. and I want to find out when uh, Lone Elm is having the, uh, the the little country fair, whatever it is yeah. they do. Uh, and book it for that weekend. Yeah, it's a good idea. So, I, and I love making a trip down there. Sure. It's not going to bother me none. <laughs> but you're about to go on a trip, so. We've got a. It needs to a be around that. Tour. Oh, yeah, we got a softball um, yeah. tournament. And you're probably one of the harder ones because you have something going on every weekend. Our kids just are busy. Yep. <laughs> well, 50% of the kids. Mm <laughs> hmm. But Alex is doing good in sh- uh, shotgunning. Mm, so far, but they haven't had anything now that it's super hot. Makes sense. Although I think we should go and just take a morning, go, and he can get some practice in. Oh, I'm all for that. Yeah, we need to do that. <laughs> we ought to do that. So I did, uh, I did a CT calcium score. Or I had a CT I calcium score done. So they they put you in the CT machine and they they measure across the heart and they look for calcium. Okay. Because uh, calcium is in a certain proportion to plaque. Plaque, right? That's what I figured. So plaque doesn't show up, but calcium does, mm-hmm. and it's a set ratio. It doesn't change, and it's the same for everybody. Uh, and my score was zero, meaning they didn't find wow. any any, uh, any calcium. So nice. that means I have no plaque. Yay! Which is good because my dad had his first heart attack. Oh, no at, detectable plaque. Yeah. At uh, 46, my mom had her first heart attack at 51. I'm 52. So thought, Feels I, like you do. thought I'd get that checked out. Yeah, but you've been eating vegetables for five, seven years. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and I haven't smoked cigarettes yeah, for, for, the lot, for yeah. 20 years. Yeah, so. Thank you, wifey. Yeah, I yes, think, thank um, you, wifey. <laughs> I, think, um, I think that makes a difference. Apparently it does. <laughs> yeah, um, they wanted me to do a stress test. I'm like, why do you want me to do a stress test? Because I was like, well, okay, how much is a stress test? Okay, why do you want me to do a stress test? And they're like, well, because I go, well, I, I basically know what a stress test is. That's where you try to make me build my heart rate and run, 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 and see if I get a little infarction. And they're like, yeah, basically. I go, well, I, yeah. I do that four times a week anyway. So I'll let you know <laughs> when I feel a little off. 
<laughs> after you know running my heart rate up to 160 and they're like yeah okay <laughs> well i can't do the treadmill to the rate they want so they'd have oh to yeah a, no kidding they'd have to do a chemical stress test on me Ugh, i don't even like the idea of that well, i i i saw my dad go through one and it wasn't all that bad i don't care I don't want somebody to go. I still don't want to do it. Wrong dose. <laughs> oh yeah, no shit. <laughs> Let's get the paddles. <laughs> no thanks. No, they do have everything <clears throat> in the room. I bet. <laughs> you know why? That's happened before. Oh, you no, know, no doubt. Yeah, that's why I don't want to do that. Because <laughs> if something starts to break bad, I can at least stop running. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> True enough. Ah, no, don't go down there. Once that chemical's in your system, ah. Uh, Hmm. We're gonna pull your blood out. <laughs> yeah, doesn't exactly work that way, does it? Mm-mm. No. So I don't think I'd do a chemical stress test. Mm-mm. Nope. See if we had transporters, then they could just put you through the transporter and fix it, and put you back together. No kidding. <laughs> just don't transport that plaque. Exactly. Why you uh, leave some of the cancers out too? Exactly. <laughs> You know, actually, while you're at it, did you just leave all the everything else behind? I want to take a shower today. <laughs> <laughs> like anything that seems like it's extra, like anything stinky, just leave it behind. <laughs> the lipo, leave all this the liposuction. There you go. Yeah, liposuction okay. through or uh, what, what? What is that? Transporter based um, plastic surgery. Yeah. <laughs> Particle surgery. Mm-hmm. Although they can really mess you up, just like regular liposuction. If they take too much out at once, it throws off your entire uh, water balance and everything. And Yeah, that, that can be bad. Like, people have died from that. So uh, no Maybe doubt. don't lipo me during the transporter. I know. It's not something I'm going to have to say soon. But <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, if your transporter is Yeah, sure. Every day, Do it every day. Take an ounce off. What, per, what percentage? Yeah, what just percent? take a little bit off each time. Yeah. Tell you what, when I was going to the bars almost every night, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, that, I so very much wanted transporters to just be me home. Just, yeah, just be me home. Be me home to the bathroom. Here, here's my, <laughs> here's my coordinates. Be me home. I know this spot has nothing in it. Be me there. Yeah, that's the other thing that bothered me. I would, I would end up with something stuck in a wall. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Put it back, put it back, put it back. <laughs> Great. Now I got sheetrock in with my bloodstream. <laughs> Not Your good. calcium levels are up. My calcium levels increase dramatically. <laughs> What's he got? Plaque? No. Sheetrock. No. <laughs> he's got he's got sheetrock he's got, poisoning. He's got Jimson all over him. All in him. Mm-mm. No, I mean it's, it's a it's a that would be a scary technology. Oh and, yeah, and I I really don't think I would do it. But oh, I thought you meant just in general. After after a couple of hundred years, when it's proofed out, I might do that. <laughs> well, you'd have to have no fly zones. Like, hey, you can't just beam into my house, okay? You'd, there would have to be all kinds of security around it, and of course, somebody's going to figure out how to break the security. And so now you just got. People showing up in safe vaults and yeah, it, in, it, in your house. Gonna, and it's going to start with uh, special forces and SWAT teams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. The new oh, black, you, black you got a no knock warrant? Let's just beam you right into the house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then all, all, all criminals are just waiting for the bright light. <laughs> That's when you need the uh, equivalent of the black helicopters. For your beaming technology. <laughs> New lightless. Light, lightless beaming. Lightless beaming. <laughs> well, you know, Star Trek could do that, but then there wouldn't be the fancy show of when they beam someone. True that. Because it's always been kind of a show, right? Well, it has to be. It started out with everybody turned into gold, gold glitter. Yes. And then everybody turned into light. 
Well, it, it had to be done early on because you needed a transition to get the person off the set. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze frame. Okay, move. <laughs> Put it in the goobly gock. <laughs> Yeah, because if the person just disappeared, they go, lame cut. <laughs> Boy, what a terrible, what a stupid cut scene. <laughs> well, they did have some bad ones. <laughs> but, you know, special effects weren't them what they are now. <laughs> oh, my God, no. <sighs> this has been very pleasant and relaxing. It has. You know what, though? In I the final third calling. here, I am getting some toast. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> It's toastier and it's milded it out a little bit for me. Even with the rum. Yeah. I, I kind of always intermittently stopped. I've been, you know. Well, do we want to go ahead and close this out? Yeah, let's go ahead and close it out. Okay. So um, I did not know that Navy strength was a thing. Or standard. Or standard. 57%, uh, 114 proof. Kind of cool. Wow, spicy. This, you know, this is there. This isn't your everyday. This isn't your papa's rum. Yeah, <laughs> got some burn. Um, the Cohiba Puro Dominicana, absolutely fabulous. I love this stick. Uh, I'm sorry to see it go from their website. It feels like a thing, things to come, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I maybe grab some before they're gone. Yep. Stick them in your box and let them go. Uh, I, I would buy this bottle again, but like I said, I couldn't. I couldn't drink it all night. Uh, the proof down was much better. It was. A lot more flavorful. Yes. Um, yeah. All right. I feel better. Heck yeah. <laughs> that is really great news from the CRA. Yeah, it is.